Rangers. The Galactic Zoo Protocol has existed for a reason. Species need to demonstrate their ability to participate in interstellar society before they are granted a provisional access license, a PAL. This was for their protection, as well as for the protection of all sentience. Since it appears the dire nature of this situation has not been properly understood by the Ranger Corps, I will repeat the nature and purpose of the relevant zoo protocols. The preconditions for a PAL are relatively simple. 1. A species must be post-conflict. 2. A species must be post-scarcity. 3. A species must be post-expansionism. Until a species reaches that point, they are to be denied access to interstellar byways and confined to the designated natural habitat zones, NATHUB, a space extending roughly 20 light years out from their home world. Effective. Safe. Fair. Therefore, it is with great concern that I read reports that humanity has extended beyond this NATHUB and has been seen as far as 6,000 light years from their home world. As you are most certainly aware, humanity is a conflict-riven, scarcity-driven expansionist species that has already caused considerable imbalances in each region they have expanded to. I strongly advise you to determine the means they have utilized to escape their net hub and restore the proper balance as soon as possible. As you well know, an unchecked pre-PAL society is one of the greatest threats to galactic order. Thank you for your immediate attention on this matter. Haxinley of Gorp, Executive Director of Zoo Affairs, Second Spiral. Tax flushed the mucus out of both neck vents in irritation. Every time Tax turned around, Haxin Lee was crawling up her egg sack and bitching about the human situation. If he thought he could do better, he was welcome to hop the byways with her and see if he could do better. It wasn't her fault they weren't making headway. The rangers weren't staffed up for whatever the ship was going on. Humans. Everywhere. As soon as she corralled some up, another dozen calls had already come in from somewhere else. Half the rangers were fretting to quit, their brains running to ooze from too many byway jobs without a break. All the containment protocols just weren't designed for something like this. Most of the time, the bad actor were a few rebel members of a PAL or even a fully fledged Sal civilization. A few poachers riding forbidden byways into NatHub zones to pick up a few curios for sale on the black markets. No problem to get on top of, even when the breach had been going on for a while. Snap the poachers off, and that was that. Sure, once in an eon you got a pre pal sieve that potted their way out of NatHab on sublight, but that was easy enough to clear up. Disappear enough putterers, and eventually they'd stop trying. But this was different. Tax called up the registry and looked at the outstanding jobs. Her eye stalks retracted half into her skull when she saw the count was over a thousand. She'd be doing back to backs until even her flippian brain was half mush, and they were just falling further behind. She sent out a ping to Yevers. He'd come along this last jaunt with her. They liked to team up when they could. Even though she was a flip and he was Barrow, they got along fine. Ranger Corps before species. That was how it was supposed to be. You seen this? Tax sent. Over a thousand, Yebbers replied. The counter was pretty much the only thing they talked about these days. That and the humans themselves. I'm losing cohesion. Not sure I got that many more jumps in me. Yeah, they all were. But Haxalinli would keep sending them out until their brains leaked out to the first orifice it could find. No way Haxalinli was going to put his head on the chopping block when he could put them on it instead. You hear they captured a mechanism? Tax flapped her fenders. Just a rumour. Point to point. Just a rumour, Tax repeated. Explains a lot, doesn't it? It did. It was also impossible. All the science said you could bore a byway, but you couldn't bend and puncture. Point to point wasn't a thing. They're not even close to getting a power, and you think they figured out point to point? You've seen them blip out, same as me. One second they're there, and the next they're gone. 
and could be cloaking. Yerba's chittered in amusement at that. Tax, we've been riding jaws together a long time, haven't we? Tax didn't reply, but Yebas took it for agreement because it was the truth, so he continued. You tell me then, what do you think they're doing? They're too far out for sublight. Too many of them in too many places for a bandit byway job. Yebas was right. She hadn't seen anything like this before. There was also the bigger problem that most species liked the humans. They were dynamic and different, exotic and crazy. All of which were nice ways of putting what they actually were. Dangerous. If they're point to point, then... Tax drifted off. It changed everything. The entire galactic order would be put on his head. Containment would be a thing of the past. Bioways would be obsolete overnight, along with all the electronic systems that were built on them. Chaos would reign. Yeah, then we're fucked. They could move from containment to enforced quarantine. Amused clicks emitted over the comm. More likely, His Holiness the Executive Director will issue an unprecedented fourth communication in a standard cycle, Yebas said. Tax suspected he was on the credits there. Something was off about the entire situation. This was an emergency, but there didn't seem to be a reaction. No grand political alliance of pals and sows had come together to take care of the human issue. More and more, Tax began to believe that some elements were actually working with the humans. It was a crazy, almost treasonous thought, but she couldn't shake it. Every time the Count notched up, she wondered how the humans had even known where to find the civilization. How they had spread so fast and so accurately. Her vents dried up to even consider it, but she was left with only one conclusion. Someone was feeding the humans.